Welcome back. You've had lots of practice writing orbital notations and electron configurations. There's one last thing that we need to talk about, which is called quantum numbers. After this video, you will be able to identify the four quantum numbers by names and symbols, write quantum numbers in order to describe an electron's position in an atom, and determine which electron is being identified by a set of quantum numbers. Quantum numbers are similar to your address in that you can think of it as an electron's address. It is a way that we assign numbers to indicate where the electron is located. There are four quantum numbers. The first is the principal quantum number. The second is the angular momentum quantum number. The third is the magnetic quantum number and the fourth is the electron spin quantum number. They all have these symbols that you see right here. We will now look at each of these in detail. The first one is the principal quantum number. It has the symbol n. n could equal one, two, three, etc. It is described as the average distance of the electron to the nucleus. The larger the value, the further from the nucleus these electrons are. Next up is the angular momentum quantum number, or L. This corresponds to the shape or orbitals, sublevels, that the electrons are located in. It depends on N. As you know, for example, N will tell you how many sublevels there are. So for example, if your L value is equal to zero, that corresponds to S. If it's equal to one, that corresponds to P. If it's equal to 2, it corresponds to D. If it's equal to 3, that's F. And 4, that's G. For example, what does L equal if N equals 1, N equals 2, and N equals 3? So when N equals 1, L equals uh, 1 minus 1, which is really 0. Or what you could say to yourself is when n equals 1, there's only one type of sublevel, and that's an s. So therefore, it has to be 0. When n equals 2, again, there are only two types of sublevels, an s and a p. So that means that it has to be 1 and 0 for those quantum numbers. And then finally, when n equals 3, there are three types of sublevels. You have an s, a p, a d, and an f. And again, s is 0. P is 1, and D is 2. Next up is the magnetic quantum number, or M sub L. This is the orientation of the orbital in three-dimensional space. So this is, again, your atomic orbital representation. So notice it is dependent on L, and that makes sense because, for example, we know that S is only has one orientation, and P has a total of three and D has 5, and F has 7. So for example, what does M sub L equal if L equals 1, excuse me, L equals 0, L equals 1, and L equals 2? So when L equals 0, that means that we're talking about an S sublevel. So that means that there's only one orientation in three-dimensional space, and that is 0. When L equals 1, M sub L can be minus 1, 0, or plus 1. And that makes sense because there are three different orientations in three-dimensional space. Because here we're talking about, since L equals 1, a P sublevel. When L equals 2, we're talking about a D sublevel. So that means M sub L could be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, or plus 2. Because again, there are five orientations in three-dimensional space for a D cell level. There's one last one. Hopefully you're holding on. I know this seems confusing, but it'll get a little bit clearer once we do some examples, so just bear with me. The last one, which is probably the easiest one, is the electron spin quantum number, or M sub S. So we mentioned, according to the Pauli principle, that electrons spin in two directions only. So that means that your um, M sub S value could either be plus one half or minus one half. The plus one half means that it is an upspin, and then as you might expect, the minus one half means that we're talking about a downspin. 
So here's some more example problems. This is where I hope it's going to get a little bit clearer for you. So it says list the values of N, L, and M sub L for the 4D sublevel. So in just looking at this, again, 4 indicates that that is the distance from the electron to the nucleus, so that has to be your N. The fact that it's D, you have to think back and say, okay, well, we know S is 0, P is 1, and D is 2, so that has to be L. And then the last part is for you to say to yourself, well, if we're talking about a D, we know that there's five orientations, so that means that we have to have five quantum numbers to describe the M sub L. And so that's why it'll look something like this. N is 4, L will be 2, and then M sub L will be all of those. So minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. Write the four quantum numbers for each electron in a 2s orbital. So as I mentioned, you can see that if we're looking at a 2s, n has to be 2. That's I think, is an easy part. s is, again, always associated with 0 for the L quantum number. The um, m sub L has to then be 0 because there's only one orientation. And then the m sub s, again, only has two choices. It can either be plus 1 half or minus 1 half. So you may say, like, how does this break down? Well, this is a good visual to help. So for that electron, because it has the upspin, that would be the particular quantum numbers for that electron. And then this electron, this would be those particular quantum numbers. Notice the quantum numbers are the same for the first three, but they're different in terms of the spin. Okay, so this is the part where I recommend that you try this. And so if you want, I would encourage you to pause it and try this one on your own and then see if you get it right. Okay, hopefully you did that. So um, if you wanted to write the four quantum numbers for all electrons in the 3p orbital, so let's dissect this a little bit. Again, it's 3p, so we're talking about, and it has to be three for all of these. Since we're talking about P, that means that L has to be 1 for every single one of these. And then um, when you split it up into all the different orientations, you could have minus 1, 0, or plus 1. So, for example, these are what we talked about. And then again, M sub S has to be either these two. So if you look at this, these should be the different quantum numbers that you got. So, for example, this one would correspond to the, force, the first orientation in three-dimensional space for the 3p orbital. This would correspond to the second, and then this would correspond to the third. So these two quantum numbers are going to be the same for all of these, but these will be different. As with all things in chemistry, you will need to practice. But trust me, the more you practice, the easier it will get. Great job today. I know that wasn't easy.